Hi, those of you who have been following my channel lately probably spotted that I've been playing around with making uh, discharge tubes as in neon lights. Some of them have been quite good and some haven't worked out very well, I'm still practicing. This is a neon tube I made recently and it's started to fail. Uh, and it's worth looking at what the failure is. I can say it worked at the beginning, uh, it uh, did overheat at one point but uh, it was working and now it won't work on an ordinary neon sign transformer. I can just get it to start working. This is on a, an oil burner and it's starting to glow um, but some really odd behaviour. Notice the uh, glass wall is glowing, uh, particularly where the join is made. Right, I've got set up here the uh, the tube under tests. So this is our tube here, and the uh, this is a Geiger counter uh, connected to the counter over here, and I have a high voltage supply which I can adjust at this point. Um, so we've basically wired this up just now. This will be anode and cathode, uh, and we're pointing the detector around about this part here. So if I put the uh, supply voltage on. And that's 10 kV across the the tube and, uh, and that's 15 kV and we are getting 50 counts per second Eighteen kV. That uh, alarm says full scale, which is two thousand counts per second. I always like to double check that it's not interference with the detection equipment because sometimes electrical noise uh, produces a false s signal. Uh, this was a little piece of lead here, and I will apply the voltages again, so that's 10 kV that's 15 kV and that's 20 kV we're not getting the count rate it's only 20 counts per second so what's happened that this has turned from a neon uh, tube into uh, an x-ray tube we're producing x-rays because the voltages are so high and the reason the voltage has gone so high is that the vacuum inside the tube is improving um, and that's the unusual thing so we've actually produced the vacuumed it down filled it with neon and somehow the vacuum is still getting better this as far as i can work out is down to this coating here on the around the electrodes the electrodes when they're new don't have any coating around them this is how they should look in a healthy situation this is known as sputtering and it's basically the electrode is being e eroded uh, by the ionization or bombardment by the ions and that is condensing on the outer wall so the metal of the the electrode is evaporating and condensing on the outer wall. Uh, it looks very shiny and silvery but it has a, a property that's more like a sponge uh, and the, the molecules of gas inside the tube are able to be absorbed and trapped in this, uh, in this actual coating. I have tried to liberate it by heating it but it hasn't been that successful or to, to absolutely prove it uh, but it is behaving effectively like a getter that you would have seen in old television and radio valves like this one. This type of getter uh, was used uh, uh, to, to maintain the vacuum of a valve through its life. The, uh, the interesting thing is if this breaks this turns white because it reacts with oxygen uh, and moisture in the air uh, to let you indicate that the vacuum has failed whereas this one will not this one will stay shiny mirrored like 
So the actual mechanism is basically the voltage is increasing because more and more of the neon is being trapped in this uh, uh, sputtering and uh, therefore the voltage has to go up to maintain a, a conduction path uh, and as that happens you also start hitting the walls by quite high speed and energetic electrons where the electrons are hitting the glass they are capable of producing X. Of course this can't happen in an ordinary neon situation because the transformers driving these tend to max out about 15 kV and basically not being able to drive it, the tube would just extinguish um, so it wouldn't get to the point of producing x-rays.